Is it really true that I had a heart attack? Did it really happen? Well, it's... John Meadows was more than a bodybuilder. He was a legend in the fitness community, known for his incredible physique, unwavering determination, and passion for helping others. John would build a name for himself by attaining his IFBB Pro Card, participating in bodybuilding competition, nurturing other people's talent, sharing his vast knowledge, and literally inventing his own weight training exercise. Through these ventures and many others, he would establish his own legacy. However, this legacy was almost cut short in 2005 and was so in 2021. John Meadows, he has uh, unfortunately uh, passed away. This is the entire life story of the mountain dog, John Meadows. Born on April 11, 1972 in Washington Courthouse, a small town 40 miles south of Columbus, Meadows grew up in challenging conditions. John unfortunately never met his father and his mother died at an extremely young age. As a result of this, John would be raised entirely by his grandmother. Despite these trying circumstances, he spoke very highly of his grandmother and his upbringing. John stated, quote, my grandmother was one of those grandmothers that honestly, even if I were a colossal failure, she'd probably still love me. Meadows would of course later make a name for himself in bodybuilding, a journey which began in 1983. John would frequently go to the local sundry store with his grandmother and sit on the floor in the magazine section, reading the anatomy and physiology articles in Muscle and Fitness. His grandmother was a very well-known cook in their local restaurant, which was a favorite eatery within their community. As a result of this, she would always run into people and chat with them, which allowed John plenty of time to memorize all the muscle names and exercises. John stated, quote, My favorite sections were the kinesiology articles where they showed diagrams instead of photos and explained muscle function. Those articles fascinated me, and I suppose that showed that I was really interested in how muscles work and how to get the best out of them. In his early schooling days, John became involved in a variety of sports. Some of his favorites included baseball, American football, track, and wrestling. In 1985, at the age of 13, John entered his first bodybuilding contest. In the Mr. Buckeye competition for teens, John competed against three other participants aged between 14 and 17 years. As the youngest and least developed of all the competitors, John took last place in the competition. When describing the experience, Meadows stated, at 119 pounds, I got fourth out of four. I don't really have a lot of recollection on how I prepared for it, other than people told me not to drink water for the last day or two. I remember just having a couple of ice cubes now and then. That was pretty much all the liquid I got. In 1997, John would meet his wife Mary, who was his biggest supporter. In that same year, John would place second in the NPC Physique Light Heavyweight Division. The couple would marry in 2002 and later have two twin boys, Alexander and Jonathan. Meadows had also stated multiple times that he couldn't have achieved what he did without Mary and the support of his family. John would also attain several certifications including a Bachelor in Health and Fitness Management and becoming a Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist and Sports Nutritionist. In 1999, Meadows would participate in two NPC competitions, first in the Jan Tanner Amateur Heavyweight and Overall in which he placed first and second in the USA Championships heavyweight in which he placed fourth. With these new experiences under his belt and a burning passion for fitness, John would take to the forums in the following year. Tragically, his grandmother would also pass away in 1999. Despite being in good health, she suddenly passed in her sleep. John was devastated by the event as he didn't have the chance to talk to his grandmother one last time. He said, quote, it was rough because I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. I was in shock because she didn't have anything wrong with her. She just went to sleep and didn't wake up. John was left alone without his only family to support him, but fortunately had already found a passion to fuel him. Many fans knew John as the Mountain Dog, but how did he get this nickname? In 2000, Meadows started to post on bodybuilding forums to share his knowledge and wisdom. As was the culture of the internet at the time, John decided that he needed a screen name. John owned a Bernese Mountain Dog and subsequently chose the name for himself. On these forums, John would continuously give his views on training and nutrition, and people would write comments such as, well, that's mountain dog philosophy. To this point, he stated that, quote, it just kind of started growing on its own. Mountain dog grew in popularity. In 2011, I established mountain dog as an LLC and launched the website. That's when mountain dog really took off. 
John would participate in five competitions between 2001 and 2004, with his most notable finishes being first in the NPC Collegiate Nationals Heavyweight and Overall, and third in the NPC Eastern USA Championships Heavyweight Division. However, in 2004 when doing his morning cardio, Meadows began to lose control of his bowel function and continuously had to use the bathroom within five minutes, or else. Confusing and painful symptoms would continue to appear, such as stabbing-like spasms and elevated mercury levels. Meadows stated that, quote, Doctors kept telling me I had colitis. I told them, I don't have colitis. I don't have one single symptom of colitis. It's something else. This confusion remained until such time that John had blood, quote, pouring out of my backside. Luckily, John's wife Mary had taken him to the hospital earlier and refused to leave, despite the fact that doctors could find no abnormalities. It was clear that Mary knew something was awry. This would prove an important decision, as John would almost certainly have died if they weren't already there. Meadows would say his last goodbyes to his wife before being rushed into emergency surgery, as he was convinced that he was going to bleed out. However, this would thankfully not be the case, and he would make a full recovery. After he had recovered, Meadows would visit the Mayo Clinic and later learn that he had a rare vascular disease called idiopathic myointimal hyperplasia of the mesenteric veins. After multiple surgeries and several months of recovery, John was finally back on his feet. Despite this massive setback and numerous doctors encouraging him not to, John would continue to compete post-surgery. This being at the encouragement and guidance of another doctor and friend. Impressively, he would attain his pro card 16 years after entering his first competition. John participated in 14 contests, starting with 4th place in the heavyweights at the 1999 USA Championships before he entered the 2015 Masters Team Universe and won the overall to gain his pro card. When the announcer called the names of all the other competitors and John was still standing there alone, he felt his emotions overwhelm him as he realised that he'd won. Somebody sneakily went and got Mary and brought her backstage, which made the experience that much more emotional for John, who stated that, quote, after 16 years of trying for the card, it was an unbelievable feeling that will be really hard to beat. After earning his pro card that night, Meadows would go on to participate in seven further contests, with his most notable placing being third in the Tampa Pro of the same year. John's placings would unfortunately then progressively drop, including a controversial 9th out of 9 entrance at the 2016 Arnold Classic. Meadows would apparently place last due to conditioning, despite being one of the leanest and driest athletes in the lineup. However, these placings would lead Meadows to the realization that helping others was more important and rewarding to him. John stated, quote, To actually make a difference in people's lives is more important than being a figure in the industry. I'd rather be known as the guy that helped thousands and thousands of people and gave back to the community. That means so much more than, yeah, that's the guy who got third at the 2015 Tampa Pro. As such, John would do exactly that and assist numerous professional and amateur athletes to excel in their competitions. I mentioned earlier that John himself created an exercise. I would ascertain that many bodybuilding fans would struggle to name an individual who has achieved this since Arnold Schwarzenegger. This exercise was a one-arm row with a barbell in a landmine base, which later became known as the Meadows Row. John was also involved with various companies including Elite FTS and Iron Rebel. He also started his own supplement company, Granite Supplements, in 2016. Unfortunately, John would be faced with further health complications in May of 2020 as he suffered a heart attack that was caused by blood clots. He eventually recovered, but doctors confirmed that part of his heart wasn't working effectively or efficiently. Is it really true that I had a heart attack? Did it really happen? Well, it's absolutely true. Um, I started feeling some chest pain right in my sternum. And it was unlike any pain I've ever felt before. It was very scary. I, I asked him, you know, what's going on? Because I could see he was studying the um, readings on my heart pretty closely. And he said, you're having a heart attack right now. I'm very, very happy to be alive. Um, 
when you're sitting in an ambulance and the guy tells you you're having a heart attack right now and you see the look on his face and how concerned he is and then you think to yourself, boy, this is serious. That wasn't a good feeling. Once again, Meadows would go on to make a full recovery and return to training and coaching full time. However, tragedy would strike just one year later. On the 8th of August, 2021, John Meadows passed away at the age of 49. The news was shared on his Facebook page on behalf of Mary by Brooke Napo. The post read, Dear friends and family, I am posting this on behalf of Mary. This morning, John passed away unexpectedly and peacefully in their home. As you can imagine, this is a complete shock to her and the boys. According to Fitness Fault, he reportedly passed due to a pulmonary embolism. Fitness YouTuber Jeff Cavalier started a GoFundMe to support John's wife Mary and their sons. That, uh, where I think the, the biggest hole though that's, that, that bothers me is as a father, I, I feel for his children. Um, we were both fathers of twin boys. I just truly am heartbroken about what's happened and most of all for those that he leaves behind. This GoFundMe, which raised $259,000 129 US dollars greatly surpassed the goal of $200,000 and was donated by 6.4 thousand people. The rallying behind the fundraiser speaks volumes to the effect John had on the fitness community and the world over. Beyond his own achievements, Meadows was and will continue to be known for his generosity and willingness to help others. He mentored countless aspiring bodybuilders, sharing his knowledge and passion for the sport. This unwavering support of others and yearning for his clients and even strangers to succeed is John's legacy, as is the family he has left behind. To his wife Mary and to his boys Alexander and Jonathan, although I didn't have the pleasure of personally knowing your husband and father, he will be remembered for what a great man he was, and you should know that he will be sorely missed by his fans worldwide. Most importantly, I am sorry for your loss, and pray that you have found peace in the years which have passed. In the absence of his physical presence, John's legacy lives on through you. Bodybuilding has produced many legends, some of which have become household names. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Kai Greene, Lou Ferrigno. These men are known to most due to excelling in both bodybuilding competition and featuring in Hollywood productions. But there are plenty of bodybuilders who have not received the recognition they deserve. Here are three bodybuilders who, despite their incredible achievements, remain relatively unknown. Aaron Baker was born on November 9th, 1960 in California, USA, and boasted the nicknames of Batman and Dark Angel. He was best known for having a very muscular, well-conditioned and extremely balanced physique. Ronnie Coleman once said that he was impressed when laying his eyes on Batman, I mean Aaron, for the first time. Any crazy person that never won that you, you really were impressed by? Uh, Aaron Baker? Yeah, I was I real he, impressed with Aaron. I'll never forget the first time I saw Aaron. I thought he was a, a superhero. <laughs> he looked like Aaron one. Baker was and he, dressed, he was Batman. Actually, yeah. he came out and did a Batman routine. I thought it was, a, it was actually the best thing yeah. I've ever seen. Also, I'm not entirely sure how many bodybuilders can say that they have met Whoopi Goldberg, but this one can. Baker featured in four TV shows and three films, most notably in Sister Act 2, as seen here. He's also one of the most heavily underrated and underappreciated bodybuilders in history. This is evident when examining his gym training footage. Baker made his amateur bodybuilding debut at the 1987 NPC USA Championships, placing fifth, and went on to compete for a further decade in the IFBB. This professional career commenced when the bodybuilder earned his IFBB Pro Card with a win at the 1990 NPC Championships. When watching footage of Aaron filmed in 1998 in preparation for the Olympia, it's hard to comprehend why and how he placed 14th that year. However, when you see the list of those who placed higher, it becomes more understandable. Unfortunately, Baker would never win an IFBB competition, yet had come close on a few occasions. His best professional showings include second at the 1995 IFBB Florida Pro, second at the 1995 IFBB Ironman Pro Invitational. In second place, Aaron Baker. Third at the 1994 IFBB Ironman Pro Invitational and third at the 1998 IFBB, you'll never guess it, 
Ironman Pro Invitational. It's also worth noting that he participated in 24 IFBB competitions between 1993 and 2003, including four Mr. Olympias and four Arnold Classics. Born on December 23, 1945, on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, New York, Dennis Tenorino was a second-born son of third-generation Italian-American parents. His family moved to Brownsville, Brooklyn when Dennis was eight years old. His father, Carmine, was a dock worker and Golden Gloves boxer. Carmine took Dennis to his first workout at the Brooklyn Central YMCA when Dennis was 12 years old. He became motivated to train as a bodybuilder after looking in the mirror and feeling that he was, quote, so skinny he could duck raindrops. After leaving school, Dennis got a job at Olympic Radio and Television. Here, he met Joe Abenda, who became his mentor, along with Bill Pearl, who convinced Dennis to increase his training frequency. This frequency increase allowed Dennis to kickstart his career when he won the Teen Mr. America, Mr. Atlantic Coast, Mr. East Coast, and Mr. Brooklyn contests in 1964. He would also finish second to Arnold Schwarzenegger at the Mr. Universe contest in 1967 at the age of 21. Dennis had the rare honor of having won an overall NABBA amateur Mr. Universe, won his class twice in the pro NABBA Mr. Universe, and competed in the Mr. Olympia six times. Due to his highly decorated career in bodybuilding, he was inducted into the AAU and IFBB Hall of Fame, and interestingly, the National Fitness, the All Time Barbell and Strongman, and the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fames. Throughout his illustrious career, Tenorino graced the cover of dozens of bodybuilding and fitness magazines, including Muscle and Fitness, Muscular Development, Iron Man, and Strength and Health. During his latter competition days, he established the Dennis Tenorino Ministries based in Beverly Hills in 1979, becoming an international evangelist. Mm. And said, Dad, I just heard the Holy Spirit. He spoke to me. He told me what life's about. It's about serving Christ. It's about knowing Christ. Mm. And it's about doing what he wants you to do. It's eternity. In 2006, he wrote a book called Supersize Your Faith, Tapping Into God's Miracle Power. Dennis focused just as hard on his faith as he did in bodybuilding and had a long and distinguished career in both. Tenorino unfortunately passed away at Northbridge Community Hospital in Northbridge, California after an 18-month battle with stomach cancer on May 7, 2010, aged 64. Referred to most commonly by his nickname, Mr. Big, Victor Richards may be considered one of, if not the most significant, what-ifs in bodybuilding history. Richards was born in Nigeria in 1964, but lived much of his life in the United States. Vic was born the ninth out of 10 children and started weight training at 15, already weighing 210 pounds or 95 kilograms. This fact demonstrates Victor's sheer genetic potential. In his schooling years, Richards spent most of his time playing football, wrestling, and competing in track, later moving to California to focus primarily on bodybuilding. At the age of 17, Victor started training in Gold's Gym, Venice Beach, California, with his mentors David and Peter Paul, the Barbarian Brothers. Peter and David Paul. Oh, get out of here, it's mine. No, get out. I'm going out. Richard's most notable successes in bodybuilding competition include second at the 1982 American Cup, first at the 1983 Teen Los Angeles title, first at the 1984 California Gold Cup Classic, and first in the 1989 Mr. Barbados, after which he went on hiatus. However, he would step back on stage in 1992. At the Nigerian Championships of that year, Richards won the show and earned his pro card. At this point in time, Richards was known as Mr. Big, and for good reason. He was weighing over 300 pounds during his off-season, and his arms in particular blew a lot of other competitive bodybuilders out of the water. In 1993, he showed up at a guest posing event where he stood side by side with six-time Mr. Olympia winner, Dorian Yates. Compared to Dorian, who was obviously also known for his size, Richards looked comparable at the least, and perhaps even made Dorian look inferior. Unsurprisingly, fans were very excited to see the potential matchup between the two super heavyweights. Richards would also apparently apologize to Dorian after the contest, 
fearing that he had indeed made the Olympia champion look small. Despite this comparable physique, Richards would never actually compete as a professional, making him the biggest what if in bodybuilding history. These bodybuilders may not be household names, but their contributions to the sport are undeniable. They may not carry the same notoriety as Schwarzenegger or Ferrigno, but their physiques and stage presence speak volumes. Franco Colombo was more than Arnold's bestie. It is a name that will forever be synonymous with strength, muscle density, and the golden era of bodybuilding. He would make a name for himself through excelling in numerous fields, including boxing, bodybuilding, personal training, and acting, and later, as a chiropractor. Behind this legend lies a story of triumph and tragedy, a life cut short, but never forgotten. This is the entire life story of Francesco Maria Colombo. Francesco, who will hereforth be referred to as Franco, was born in Sardinia, Italy on August 7, 1941. He was the son of shepherds Maria Grazia Seda and Antonio Colombo. Franco's early years were marked by hardship and struggle. Even as a young boy, he showed a remarkable strength of character and an unwavering determination to succeed. This was evident in his drive and focus in any given field. He had a fire inside of him which pushed him to be the best. This focus and dedication led him to pursue a range of sports, most notably boxing, in which he would become the amateur boxing champion of Italy. He himself stated, I was always skinny. Until I was 11, I got beat up a lot. Then one day, I started beating people up. Nobody could touch me. Interestingly, he worked as a shepherd while training as a boxer, and he won over 30 fights as an amateur before quitting the sport in favor of weightlifting and bodybuilding. On this, he also stated, boxing's too rough on your face and head, later remarking, boxing is a great sport, but it's really, really tough. In the early 1960s, Franco emigrated to the United States, where he would pursue his dreams in bodybuilding. And it was here that he would make a name for himself as one of the greatest bodybuilders of that era, earning him the nickname, the Sardinian Samson. He later met Arnold Schwarzenegger at a bodybuilding competition in Stuttgart, Germany, and would later form a lifelong friendship with the Austrian Oak. Today is our 51 year anniversary, which means that Franco and I met on a bodybuilding powerlifting stage in Stuttgart, Germany in 1965 on October 31st. So think about that, 51 years ago. In his prime, Franco's statistics included 185 pound stage weight, or 83.9 kilograms, five foot, five inches tall at 165 centimeters, and 19 inch arms and a 50 inch chest. As far as competitions are concerned, in the 1960s, Franco would compete in the 1966 Mr. Europe, in which he placed fourth, 1968 NABBA Mr. Universe, where he won the most muscular placing second in the short category. 1969 IFBB Mr. Europe, where he won first in the medium category. 1969 NABBA Mr. Universe, where he won the most muscular, placing first in the short category. 1969 IFBB Mr. Universe, where he won the short category. And the 1969 IFBB Mr. World, in which he would also place first in the short category. In that same year, Joe Weider sponsored both Arnold and Franco and gave them $80 in allowances per week to train in America. To pay their way and continue living in America, the two started a brick laying and patio business called European Brickworks in 1969. Here's footage of Arnold proudly showing one of his brick and concrete walls, which he and Franco built, which still stands firm. Well, this is the wall that Franco and I built in 1971. So we're talking about uh, 45 years ago or yes. so this wall was built. I mean, it's unbelievable and it's still standing. And remember, we gave them a lifetime guarantee. So I see some problems up here, Franco. But it's a minor I thing. I think that we have to come back and fix it. You fix the cement, <laughs> I put it, I fix it, and we don't get paid. Exactly. We don't even get paid. No, we don't know because it's a warranty. <laughs> okay. it's, it's on the warranty. Oh, yeah. It's we got to keep the problem. Lifetime warranty. We got, we got to keep the exactly. problem. Exactly. Throughout the 1970s, Franco dominated the bodybuilding scene, 
winning numerous competitions and earning the respect of his peers and fans alike. The most notable accomplishments of Franco on the bodybuilding stage include the 1970 IFBB Mr. Europe in which he placed first in the short category and was the overall winner. 1970 AAU Mr. World in which he won the pro short category. 1970 IFBB Mr. World in which he won the short category. 1970 IFBB Mr. Universe in which he placed first in the short category and was the overall winner. 1970 NABBA Mr. Universe in which he placed second in the short category. 1971 IFBB Mr. World in which he placed first in the short category and was the overall winner. 1973 Mr. Olympia in which he placed second. 1974 Mr. Olympia in which he was the lightweight champion which is the under 200 pound category. 1975 Mr. Olympia in which he would retain the lightweight champion title. And finally the 1976 Mr. Olympia in which he was the lightweight and overall champion. At the end of his career, Franco was known for his well-balanced physique. However, this was achieved through years of development. Colombo was first known for his chest, then his lats, before finally moving on to create a fully well-developed and well-rounded physique. Franco confirms this once stating, first I was known for the chest, then I trained for a few more years and I was known for my lats. It took a while for the whole thing to come together. That said, Franco's talents were certainly not limited to just the bodybuilding stage. He also found some success in Hollywood, appearing in several films alongside his bestie, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The majority of these were released in the 80s and 90s. However, in the 70s, Franco would feature in Stay Hungry in 1976 as Franco Orsini and secondly in Pumping Iron in 1977 as himself. Interestingly, in this same year, Franco would also place fifth in the world's strongest man. His strongest powerlifting records include a bench press of 525 pounds or 238 kilograms, a squat of 655 pounds or 297 kilograms, and a deadlift of 750 pounds or 340 kilograms. These two worlds would collide, particularly in a scene from Pumping Iron, which was filmed in his native Sardinia. In this scene, as you can see, he was shown lifting the back end of a car and casually swinging it over to the curb, pretty easy parallel park if you ask me, and he was also shown blowing up a hot water bottle with just his mouth power. Not really sure how I can make that not sound weird. Anyway, moving on. Regardless, these were two clear feats of his world-class strength. Franco's fifth place finish in the 1977 World's Strongest Man is even more outstanding, especially when you consider he suffered a serious leg injury in one of the races within this competition. This particular race involved strapping a literal fridge to the competitor's back, and in a sprint to the finish line, Franco subsequently stumbled and dislocated his leg. Uh, this day is broken, but I know it's not broken because I'm a chiropractor myself and I saw the way it was dislocated. The biggest problem is uncomfortable, but it's not too much pain, you know. I, I was doing too fast off start, you see. I wanted to win it because I was behind in points and I, I began to run and that was the wrong thing. You can only walk fast in that. This was understandably the last time he competed in the World's Strongest Men event, but Franco would also attain the powerlifting titles of Champion of Italy, Champion of Germany, and Champion of Europe. Franco would win the Mr. Olympia competition one more time in 1981, albeit quite controversially. Despite this controversy, it must also be noted that this victory came only months after this devastating injury suffered at the World's Strongest Man event. Colombo's conditioning and musculature was noticeably less striking, and this win would establish one of the most controversial Olympia results in history, being called the greatest booing contest of all time by Tominator. I believe this is a fitting title, and the reasoning for this is obvious. Tom Platts, Roy Callender, and Danny Padilla looked not even marginally better, but far better. Franco came into the contest with a clear lack of conditioning, especially in his legs, understandable obviously given his injury, and visual gynecomastia. 
and it certainly didn't help that Arnold himself was a promoter for this contest, surely a clear example of bias. Franco would also feature in 10 more films in the 1980s, most notably Conan the Barbarian in 1982 as Pictish Scout, The Terminator in 1984 as Future Terminator, and Predator in 1987 as The Medic. Franco was also Arnold Schwarzenegger's best man at his wedding in 1986, at which time he married Maria Shriver, and Franco was also named as their daughter Christina's godfather. Franco would later create a training guide which was aimed at those who wanted to build some muscle. Colombo would also train with Sylvester Stallone as he needed to pack on 10 pounds of lean muscle in time for shooting Rambo First Blood 2. The main problem of course being that he only had 6 weeks to do it. Well, Franco got him across the line. After his career in both bodybuilding and Hollywood drew to a close, Franco then went on to become a chiropractor a profession in which he would dedicate the rest of his time. Unfortunately, on August 30, 2019, Franco Colombo passed away at the age of 78, leaving behind a legacy of strength, determination, and unwavering passion. Franco and Schwarzenegger remained very close friends until Colombo's passing, with Schwarzenegger stating in 2016, he was my favourite training partner four decades ago, and he is my favourite training partner today. This friendship was evident in the bodybuilding docudrama Pumping Iron. Though his physical presence may be gone, his spirit lives on in the hearts of all of those who knew and admired him. Franco was a trailblazer in bodybuilding. His incredible physique and unmatched strength pushed the boundaries of what was possible and inspired a whole generation. Hey, what's going on, butter chicken? If you wouldn't mind uh, subscribing to the channel, that'd be very much appreciated. Yeah, just click the link up there. Go on, you don't want to. All right, click it on three. One, two, three, subscribe. Oh yeah, watch this next. Catch a bunch.